if someone would give you, let's say you're fluent in Lashon HaKodesh, Hebrew, the Holy Tongue, and English, someone gives you the English, and then they give you the Hebrew, you will get a completely different understanding of it. Because Hebrew is unique. There is no other language like it. Each word has multiple nuances, inflections, meanings. It can be translated in many ways. Apart from the fact that there's gematriot that you can learn from, etc. And to then translate that word, which could mean different things under different circumstances, you're giving it one fixed translation in English, because that's how English works. And you can't read it another way to learn out from it what exactly, what exactly it's saying. I'll give you a small example. What's the word for and in Hebrew? Okay, you say ve, I say we. Whatever it is. That's all it is. I agree, ve is very funny, but that's another story. Uh, but you know what? We doesn't only mean and. Did you know that? It can mean but. It could just be some way of joining that you wouldn't translate when you're translating from Hebrew. If you look at the translations, it's not always translated as an. And that's just one letter. What happens when you have a whole word? I want to tell you something that Morena Rabbeinu Achamis of Haim Shalom, the holy Ben Ishai, writes in Hastei Avot. He says, take the word azab, the root of the word anzan be, azab. Azab, left. However, we see the same root in Parashat Mishpatim where it speaks about when you see your enemy's donkey, your enemies, not just a neighbor, your enemy's donkey, and it's suffering under the load, it says, Azob ta azob emmo. What does that mean? It doesn't mean you're going to leave him and walk away. It means you have to help him. The same root, the same word, which could mean leave or desert, means you have to help. So if you see the word azab, how do you translate it into Greek? How do you translate it into English? That is the difficulty. Not only that, in Hebrew, you can take the letters of a word and you can change the order. You can change the order of the letters and you get something completely different. And this is one of the ways of understanding the Torah and learning different things. So he gives an example here. He says, when Israel sins, when the Jewish people sin, they receive nega'im, affliction. Okay, nega is affliction. Nun giman an. It is the same root as the word onel, delight. You should call Shabbat a delight. So he says, what we see from this is that the afflictions of the Jewish people turn into delight. Because you have nega and you have... Right. So the, the afflictions of the Jewish people turn into delight. How and when? I assume that is when we repent or realize what wrong we've done and try to change our ways because he says when it happens is when their pesha when their sin which is peshin an pesha is sin turns into we'll turn the letters around shefa abundant blessing same letters so the mishnah that this is actually this whole explanation is going on is the one that says hafokhba wa you have to turn the Torah this way, and you have to turn the Torah that way, that way, the cholaba, because everything is in it. And one of the explanations that he's trying to bring out here is you take the words of the Torah, and you turn the words this way, and the letters that way, this way, and that way, this way, and that way, in each, each way you can, every which way, inside out, and you end up with cholaba, the whole Torah, everything is in the Torah.